That's this terrible, show was it? full of excellent wrestling matches. CM Punk and Max Caster. Very good match. Although, on this show, it was kind of low on the very good match scale because there were so many other great matches. But they had a good match. They gave Max Caster a lot. CM Punk sold. Got him with the Anaconda device. Submitted him. And then Tony Schiavone gets in the ring for the WWE promo. What did that mean when you went like this last week? Punk goes, we're not idiots. I want the championship. And I don't know who's going to be the champion, but whoever it is, I want a shot. And before my time here is over, I will be the champion. So he's next in line. We had a segment with MJF and uh, FTR. They are clearly on their way to a breakup, but they, they didn't do this week. Nothing nothing is rushed in this promotion, I've noticed. Including the Jay Lethal heel turn. Jay Lethal, John Moxley. Lethal's all upset that he's been losing the big ones. They have a really, really good match. John Moxley ends up pinning him with the Paradigm Shift DDT. Jay Lethal is so disgusted in himself that when John Moxley offers a handshake, he almost doesn't give it to him. But he does, and then hangs his head in shame and walks out. We had a Marina Shafir video package. They're uh, debuting her here on the main roster soon. FTR versus the Gun Club. Match was uh, it was pretty good. FTR is excellent. Gun Club, and it can be carried to a good match. Billy tried to get involved. Um, in the middle of the match, Wardlow showed up, starts beating up security guys, runs through about two dozen security guys before they finally stop him from getting to MJF. MJF is screaming at him on commentary. There's a big kerfluffle. FTR wins with the big rig. MGF comes to celebrate, and FTR is furious at him. Dude, why do you have to do this to our friend? They like Wardlow. They were buddies. So they're furious, and finally cooler heads prevail. MGF raises their hands. But uh, I don't know if there's going to be a big rig in MGF's future. Maybe they won't give us that one. But uh, this, this crew is not long for the world. We had Jericho Appreciation Society. They were making fun of the fact that Ortiz, Santana, and Eddie Kingston were gone for good. And, of course, there they are behind a curtain. And we have a gigantic brawl. And at first, uh, the three of them beat the hell out of the Jericho Appreciation Society. But then, finally, old Jake Hager shows up. He runs roughshod. They grab the bat. They absolutely beat the hell out of these guys. And so, once again, Kingston... Santana and Ortiz are left laying. We had Jade Cargill and Mark Sterling backstage. They ask, who's going to be number 30? Mark Sterling says, it's going to be the librarian, Leva Bates. Even Jade Cargill cannot stand for this. She says, get the hell out of here. Who's number 30 really going to be? And Mark Sterling sheepishly responds, oh, Maria Shafir. He's not confident. But Jade's confident. She says, get her out of here. So that's going to be apparently number 30, Jade Cargill and Marina Shafir. All right. Brian Danielson and Wheeler Yuta was the most glorious violence I've seen in quite some time. <laughs> Golly. Brian Danielson, I think he saw what Wheeler Yuta was wearing for tights, and he was like, this guy's going to suffer. And, boy, he beat the absolute piss out of this poor guy. He pummeled him. He smashed him. Then Wheeler Yuta makes a comeback, and the place goes absolutely nuts for Wheeler Yuta's comeback. Danielson cuts him off again. He goes to stomp his head in. Wheeler spits the most disgusting. Like, even Bret Hart was envious of this loogie that got spit on Brian Danielson. It's just all down his face. And Danielson, covered in drool, just stomps the hell out of this guy. Puts him in the uh, yes lock. Pulls out his nostrils and submits him. Golly, this guy deserves to be in the Blackpool Combat Club for this beating. We had the Indisputed Championship Celebration, even though they're not champions. They do their celebration. Out comes, uh, uh, first we had, who came out first? Hangman. And then uh, he runs wild on all three guys, but then they overwhelm him. Then we have, uh, re uh, let's see, Luchasaurus and Christian Cage come out. And uh, they beat up the heels. And at the end of the day, the baby faces get all of their belts back. So we're undoubtedly doing another Adam Cole versus Hangman Page match. And Red Dragon uh, will be getting the shot against uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. Which I suspect probably is going to end up being a title change. But I guess we'll see. We got that Thunder Rose interview everybody was waiting for last week. Remember you guys were all angry? She didn't get a chance to talk? You happy now? She says she's going to be the uh, foundation of this company. 
What? You didn't, uh, thought it was underwhelming a little bit? I wouldn't say it was underwhelming, but I mean, everybody was so angry she didn't get a chance to talk, and then she just did a generic promo, said she was going to be the champion, and then said she was the first ever Mexican-born champion, which of course is ridiculous, but I think that this is like one of those WWE deals where like Charlotte has, was undefeated on well. pay-per-view, even though she lost 85 times on TV. Thunder Rosa is the first woman in a major United States wrestling promotion who yes. is a Mexican-born woman who has yes. won a women's title. Do you believe that it may be less of a case of a WWE speak sort of thing and she just like kind of jumbled her words and misspoke? Well, I'm sure she jumbled her words and misspoke, <laughs> but that's that's what that's what she is here, so for those of you wondering. Oh, and by the way, just, just to shoehorn this in here because I thought it was kind of random, All Japan Women, the uh, classic uh, women's promotion, speaking of women's wrestling, uh, IWTV has picked up the entire back catalog of that, and they're going to be airing it. And So if you like women's wrestling, All Japan Women's, what Dave talks about and goes on rants about on these shows that with Brian, you'll get a chance to see some of that stuff now. Then we had uh, the debut of Tony Storm in a Owen Hart Foundation tournament qualifier. And uh, this place absolutely lost it for Tony Storm. And then they did not care one bit about her match with the bunny because I think they'd seen a lot of great matches and they had zero. They had, there wasn't one person. If the bunny's family were there, they didn't think she was going to win. So they just uh, watched them do their match and then cheered when she won. And uh, she cried because she couldn't believe what a reaction she got after they didn't do anything with her in WWE. A broken record. You said it right with Dave last night. They were just waiting for her to win. It really wasn't a referendum on the match. They just they popped for Tony Storm. They wanted to pop for her again in victory. Then we had Andrade versus Darby Allen. This was this was in some ways perhaps more violent than that Brian Danielson Wheeler Uta match. <laughs> Andrade is now legitimately about 255 He's pounds violent at the buffet this guy is enormous and darby is uh <laughs> He's probably eating. shoot my size eating like he's got that kind of money and he does and they uh, had a fight and andrade destroyed him and darby made these striking comebacks they had a striking battle with all these slaps i hate these slaps but they did it and then uh, finally at the end we had uh jose tried to interfere no respect this Jose gets, by the way. Not that he deserves a lot, necessarily, but well. he don't get none. They had the graphic for this match, and it says, Darby Allen with Sting versus Andrade with Jose. And they announced, coming up next, Darby versus Andrade. And the answers go, and Sting's going to be there. <laughs> now, what about Jose? He's going to be there. You guys don't care about Jose? Well, anyway, Jose. No way to Jose. Is that what they're saying? Jose tried to interfere. Sting beat him up. Then Butcher and Blade attacked Sting. Darby laid them out with a dive. But of course, in getting back into the ring, he was killed, DDT'd, and pinned by Andrade. And then we had the big schmas with uh, the Andrade. Uh, which, by the way, here in that front page report, it says AH. There's no H in this AFO anymore. It's AFO now. Hardy's gone. They uh, beat up Darby and Sting. Private Party starts to run down the ramp, and everyone initially cheers because they're like, oh, they're coming to... S oh, wait a second. They're bad guys. And so they join in the fight, and then they hit uh, the Hardys music, and then the place goes nuts again. Jeff Hardy and Matt come down. Twist of Fate, Senton. They just killed poor Mark Quinn with the Senton. He's dead, and the show went off the air with happy ending. I like this show a lot. I had so much fun watching this show. Am I the only one? No, huh? it was a good show. It was a really good show. And good. the fact that when you have long, good matches like that, and they weren't like... You Checked know, in clear, so I got to make sure. <laughs> they weren't obscenely long or anything like that, but it makes the other stuff that you do on the show stand out more. The other segments stand out more. And, you know, it was just a really, it was just a really, really solid show. And how can you go wrong? I mean, John Moxley and Jay Lethal, I don't know if Lethal is going heel. I guess it depends on what they decide to do with Ring of Honor, because... Him saying, man, I got to get my mojo back, you know, where, you know, and then he goes again, uh, that could play into some of this stuff too, but CM Punk, probably a good idea every single week, Darby Allen, CM Punk, Brian Danielson, find a way to start the show with those guys. Cause it really, 
does make a difference, in my opinion, as far as the energy of the show goes. Somebody's asking about Jeff Centon. Listen, I don't know anything about what's going on with Jeff Hardy and everything like that, but he's been he's, doing this forever, and uh, he's probably got some uh, some injuries. And if you guys recall, uh, Randy Savage used to do that flying elbow, and he wouldn't touch you until he started hurting really bad, and then he landed on you with all of his might because he didn't want to land on the mat. So, uh, you know, you do a, a senton bomb, you're young, and uh, 99% of you hits the mat. You get old, 100% of you hits the guy. Favorite quote from The Simpsons? Can you do an impression? Sure. Okay, so uh, Bart was doing some road cleanup, and he said, Hey, Krusty, what are you doing here? And Krusty says, uh, It's all part of my glug, glug, vroom, vroom, thunk, thunk. That was a very good impression, Craig. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's all part of my glug, glug, vroom, vroom, thunk, thunk. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.